Bless his name. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to the guys that are in the house today. Just want you to know that we appreciate you. We appreciate the place that you occupy in our lives, in your children's lives, and especially in the lives of those children who need to see a role model, a man that stands uprightly. I remember uh, a few years back when I was substituting in, uh, substitute teaching in Hayward, and uh, I would, uh, I remember one time, especially, I think it was an elementary, yeah, it was about, I think they were fourth graders, and, and a man came to the door and uh, came into the room. And I wish you could have seen the way those fourth or third graders looked at him. It was as if it was a phenomena. And this was a well-dressed man that was all man. And he just walked in the door and you would have thought that they had seen an alien or, 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 or some, someone from outer space, the way they gazed on him and they couldn't, whatever I was saying at the time, just they just completely tuned me out and their eyes were on him and their eyes was, what their eyes were saying was, my God, I need that in my life. That's who I want to grow up and be. All of that I read in their eyes. There was such a longing in their eyes just simply to see a role model walking among them that that blessed me for a lot of years and every time since that day that i see a man that is handling his business and and and, uh, and worshiping and adoring the lord and standing before young men and and little boys as, as one that they can look up to. I flash back on the way those kids looked at that man when he came in the room. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to deal with scarcity in that area. There are enough men, uh, upright men in the land to be able to handle that. It seems like uh, in spite of the way that we see this nation treats our men, especially our uh, uh, African-American, our black and our brown men, that if they would just stand up in the neighborhood and represent then they too would be the role models that our children need to be, look up to. Our children need men to look up to because men are the representation of the heavenly parent that God is. And they need to see that representation of who God is when they're little so that when it's time for them to grow up, they'll step into the role that they need to step into and desire to be all that God wants them to be. But they need a role model. So I thank God for those of you who, who don't just deal with your, uh, the children that you birth, but also stand as a representative that other kids kids in the neighborhood can look up to, know that we appreciate you for it. It is so very, very important. They're literally looking at you and seeing themselves down the way. And so we bless the Lord for you. And I just believe that even in these times when there are so many assaults on our black and brown men, especially that uh, God still has a plan, a great, great plan for your lives. And I'm excited about what I see in my mind, what God shows me about the men that will come through this house, that God will use you beyond measure. So you be encouraged and know 
that whatever, whatever you're doing right now, whatever you are lacking right now, because when men lack, it bugs them, okay? Uh, to no degree, because they have this desire, God-given desire to be a provider. And when something happens and there's a job loss, or even in this season, there's a, a layoff or whatever the case may be, it kind of makes them kind of on edge. And we have to, as women, we have to pray them through those seasons of their lives because the, the, the young boy and the young girls that are looking at them need to see a man who can stand no matter what and one who will also be faithful to trust in the true and the living God even when times are hard. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Jesus. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we lift up the men to you, Jesus. We lift up the fathers to you, God, that they would forever represent you, God, that they would stand in that place, Father, of priest, that they would stand in that place of provider, Father, that they would always be uh, ready in season and uh, out of season to give an answer for the hope that lies within them, Father, that uprightness would be their goal, Father, that they would desire, Father, to be pleasing in your sight, that they would desire to bless your name, Jesus, with all that is within them, God. And Father, we thank you, Father, that as we unpack this word today, Father, that it will give them just the fuel that they need, Father, to be everything that you have called them to be, Father. And for we who, who, who walk along beside them, Father, we thank you right now, Father, that you will, uh, that this word will be life for us as well, Father. Oh God, and that it will fall on ready soil. So ready the soil of our minds today, God, so that we might receive that which we need to receive to be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And all God's people, wherever they are, say amen, amen, amen. 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 I want to take a look at a psalm today uh, as one place that I want us to go. Let's look at Psalm 103, because I think that we need just the encouragement to stick with the Lord no matter what. And sometimes we need to know that he can do anything but fail, and that will help us. Hallelujah. So let's look at Psalms uh, uh, 103, because this has to be the cry of the heart of the Father, as well as the cry of the, uh, this has to be the cry of men who are fathers, as well as women. Uh, we all have to look to the Lord, all right? And so... I love this psalm. I love this psalm of David because it tells us why we can keep our eyes and our heart hooked up to the true and the living God who means us nothing but good. He really is, as that song played uh, as you all were coming in, he really is a good, good father and he's worth sticking to it. And listen to what this says. Oh my God, it says, bless and affectionately praise the Lord, oh my soul. I hope you didn't miss that opportunity this morning to just simply let your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, no matter what you were feeling this morning, that you bless the Lord with your praise. In this case, it is as if uh, David were talking to himself or looking in the mirror and saying to his mind, and saying to his uh, chooser, his will, and saying to his feelings, saying, come on now, we've got to bless 
the Lord. It ain't got nothing to do with what we feeling or what we going through. It's an opportunity right now to bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. So he's telling all that is within him, that's the heart. You know, that's the feet, that's the knees. Everything that is me ought to be blessing the Lord on Father's Day, on Mother's Day, on whatever day comes along. Every last one of us needs to position ourselves to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And then it says, and do not, uh oh. And then it says, bless and affection, affectionately praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, yes, God, yes, God. I, I, ah, you gotta, okay, what's going on? <laughs> Thank you, all right. Uh, I can see it. Uh, who forget, and do not forget any of his benefits. Whenever you find yourself thinking that God done forgot about me, he know I need that. He know I need this. What's taking him so long? Whenever we get into that place, we need something. And here's how we say it. We need it now. God, I need you now. Sometimes God has a, a better plan. And so we have to just roll out and ride along with him, knowing that in due season, because of the promises of God. He's not going to lie. And so many of us have been lied to on a lot of occasions, but God is not a man that he should lie. And we can take that to the bank. It says, do not forget any of his benefits. A lot of times when we give our heart to the Lord, we don't know what the benefits are. But David here had lived a little, so he was well acquainted with the joys and the pleasures of, because uh, he had some flaws in his character, and, but yet God considered him a man after his own heart. Glory to your name. Look at that first benefit. It says, do not forget any of his benefits in verse two. And then verse three says, he forgives all your sins. A lot of times we feel so tore up from the floor up and think that we are not worthy even of salvation. Salvation is God coming to rescue you and taking care of the penalty for every bad thing you've ever done. I know that I avoided it for years because I, I knew that I was toe up from the flow up. I knew I was making choices that were contrary to what I knew was right. And it was hard for me to wrap my mind around a God who could be so loving that he would forgive all of my sins. I would tell myself, oh, no, he can't forgive me because it's been too, I've, I've been too rotten. I've been too bad. I've, I've done things that I should not have done. I've slept with so many men and I've made a lifestyle of tossing back uh, Budweiser. And I said, and I haven't even stopped even now. And I said, and God, whatever it is that's going on, you can really, really, really forgive me for all of my sins. And I knew that it had happened the moment I said yes and amen because I felt something inside of me that I had never felt before. You see, there's a weight when you carry around the weight when you carry around this thing of knowing doing wrong and knowing that you're doing wrong. It acts like a weight on you. But I felt that weight pass. And I said, I got to experience the benefit from Jump Street as soon as I threw my hands up and said, God, I surrender. God, I can't take it anymore. God, 
I don't want to do it my way anymore. I want to do it yours. And he blessed me with that benefit. You know, on some jobs where you got to wait six weeks or, or three months for the benefits to kick in, not with Jesus. Oh boy, that benefit kicked in immediately. And I felt it in my spirit and it wasn't just a feeling. It was the knowledge of him that said, I died for your sins and you don't have to do it all over again. You ain't got to die. You get to live because I died for your sins. And I'm thankful today that he is a God who in the benefits package, when you choose to serve him, uh, forgives all of your sins. Even that sin, which is missing the mark, even that sin that you ain't told nobody about, that private sin. You know, there are public sins, like, like I committed the public sin, you know. I remember I my part of my testimony is that I didn't want anybody to know, particularly in the choir I was in, that I was uh, getting loaded as soon as choir rehearsal was over. I didn't want nobody to know that. I'm a preacher's kid, you know. I, I know what's right, but I had this uh, leaning, I had this dependency on alcohol, didn't even know what it all, all of that meant at the time. But, 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 but that, that the secret was that I didn't want anybody to know that I had, uh, that I, when I sang those songs in that choir, I, I, I let myself join that guilt would roll up and down my body, tear me up, make me run home after choir rehearsal or after a service and want to, oh, a six pack wouldn't do it because I needed to wipe out that guilt. And I just kept drinking until I was too drunk to know even that that sin, but here comes God first night that I say yes and amen, that I throw my arms up in the air and say, God, only you can help me and I want to bless your name. I want to be a blessing to you, God. I want you to save me, God. Rescue me from this life that I've been living, God. So the promise, he forgives all your sins, was real to me from the beginning. And then that's just benefit one. And then he goes on to say, David does, who heals all your diseases. Now, because resurrection is just a few weeks back, we remember that um, uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. He took those punches and stuff, and part of those was for our healing. Those things that we see in the movies and that we read about that happened at the cross, that was about our sins as well as our diseases. It's already taken care of. It's in the benefit package. Now, you know when you got a job how uh, you will stand in the face of someone and say, oh, no, 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 no. I get two weeks off. It's in my benefit package. Uh, I get three weeks of sick leave. It's in my benefit package. Well, we need to be just as bold with the Lord and rec just as bold with the things of the Lord and say, when we get sick or when we still feel, feel sickness coming on, we need to quote what David said here, uh-uh, uh, God heals my diseases. It's in his word. I read about it in Psalm 103, and I'm taking that with me to the doctor's office, and I'm going to gives me his report, I'm going to say, well, it may have come upon me, but it's got to go because God heals all of my diseases. And look at verse four, who redeems your life from the pit. Woo. 
We need a redeemer. We need somebody who will buy us back from the pit. I don't know about you, but I know I did. I know what the pit feels like. We talk about Joseph and how his brothers threw him in the pit, you know, huh? but I didn't need no brothers and sisters to throw me into the pit. I hopped in there myself, the pit represents that low place that we go when we try to do things contrary to the way God wants us to do them. And isn't it an awesome thing that he sees us in our pit, in our lowest place. And he says, come unto me, oh, you that are labor and are heavy laden. I got something for you. I got rest for you. And out of all the things that I felt on the night that I gave my life to the Lord, I think for the first time I felt rest because there was a restlessness inside of me and it wasn't doing me any good. And even alcohol couldn't take that feeling away. So he redeems my life from the pit. And that's yet another of his benefit. He buy, redeems means to buy back. He buys my life back. That's what the blood is for. We're redeemed. We're bought. Uh, blood bought, you hear people say. And then it goes on to say, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy. And that's what broke me. I could feel his loving kindness, his, his tender mercy. Mercy is when you do the crime and you don't have to uh, 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 do the time. You don't have to pay the fine. You do the crime, but you don't have to pay the fine. That's his tender mercy. And then his loving kindness is the way that when you're feeling like you're not worth anything, you might walk around with a smile on your face, but stuff be so heavy on you, be so heavy on you that he literally has to wrap you up and shield you even from everything on the outside. And he does that for us. It's a part of the benefit package. And then he goes on to say that he satisfies who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. And that's such a blessing because sometimes I wonder, especially in the summertime, I say, God, and I was telling we see this, I said, I know the Lord ain't gonna have me do this summer program uh, another year. And not only did he, uh, uh, open the door for me to do the summer program, but he intensified, intensified it because I have to invent, as I was telling Lisa earlier, everything new, everything is brand new. And the time that I had to do it in to be ready for the young people is shorter than it's ever been. And the reason he can do that is because my benefit package says my youth is renewed like a soaring eagle. So just when I think that I want to lay around and and chill, boy, he comes with some renewal of my youth that enables me to do stuff and no way in the world I would have signed up to do that myself. It's part of my benefit package. What a good God he is. He's a good, good father. Hmm. And he don't just say, sign up and I then go about your way. He signs you up and he blesses you with all of these benefits. And then in the sixth verse of Psalm 103, it says, he executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. 
You see, we need to lock our minds around that, knowing that where we see unrighteousness in the land or in our households or wherever we may go, that God is going to execute righteousness. He's going to take the unrighteousness and he's going to do something that will enable them to uh oh wake up and understand that they've got to do things to be in right standing with God just like we do and then it says justice for all the oppressed you need to circle that that comes with the benefit of who our mighty good father is he provides justice for all the oppressed in this season that we're living in right now, it looks like everything is gone awry, but you've got to hold on to the benefit package. Hold on to the fact that the scripture says he executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He ain't playing in this hour. Hold on and watch how he flips some stuff around. Hold on and see the difference between where you were standing last year and where you'll be standing at the end of this season. Hallelujah. You got to go along with the way he wants you to do it. You can't do it on your own strength. You got to be in right standing with him doing things the way that he would have you to do in every situation. Don't act like you don't know what to do because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us and he leads us into all truth, including everything that Jesus said. So we're without excuse. I already told you what mercy is. Mercy is you do the crime and you don't have to pay the fine. And the eighth verse says, the Lord is merciful and gracious. Grace is that divine favor. Grace is you didn't do anything for it, but he did it for you anyhow. I see it all the times when you, you pull up into a lot and uh, you pull up into a lot. I'm talking about grace now. You pull up into a lot and there are no parking places in sight and it might be pouring raining and you just look around and you might just say, Father, and before you know it, somebody seems to come out of nowhere and they pull out so that you can pull in and it's not a long ways because it's pouring rain in. Uh, when Moisey and I were out uh, going to places like Trader Joe's at the beginning of the, the pandemic, I watched as, and I said this before, I watched as, as when she would go to the line or go to get out the car to get in the line, how there would be nobody. And then 10 seconds after she goes in, the line is wrapped around the corner. That's the grace and the mercy of God, that grace, woo! Scripture says his grace is sufficient. You don't need anything after his grace, but he tosses in mercy anyhow, because he knows that we're gonna mess up from time to time. Now, he does not want us to be perpetual mess ups. You know, you be thinking, well, I got God's mercy, baby. You don't wanna do that because you just might run out of mercy. And after mercy comes, something you ain't gonna wanna contend with. He's merciful and gracious, it says in the eighth verse, slow to anger. Ooh, ain't that cool? He is slow to, this is the benefit package, y'all. God is slow to anger and abounding in compassion and loving kindness so patient with us. He don't explode on us. Many of us have been in relationships or, or, or had parents that were not slow to anger. They were fast to anger. You made them mad and they were gonna show you right then and there how upset they were. Well, you don't know how they were raised. Sometimes that triggers something. 
slow to anger and abounding in a compassion and loving kindness. When we sing, what a mighty God we serve, what a, hmm, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Oh my God, being a soldier in the army of the Lord, having signed up and said, God, I want to serve you and please you. Take the way the weights, God. When we do that, we get all of these benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in compassion, full of compassion and loving kindness. I don't know if anybody had a dad like that. Or saw the neighbor's dad being like that in contrast to the way your dad was. It don't matter because I said earlier that when, that when our mother and father, it says in Psalm 27, 10, forsakes us, then the Lord adopts us. And these are the benefits that come along, hallelujah. They come along with serving and pleasing him, being in his army. That's why I want to just bless his name. Because you see, there are so, I'm surrounded with this benefit package. And it won't let me fail. He won't let me fail. But then we have to remember, look at what 9 says. He will not always strive with us. That's when we're trying to pull in the direction that we want to go. And he wants us to go in this direction. It says he's not going to always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. forever. You can push him to a point. He trying to bless you. He trying to renew your youth like an eagle. He has redeemed your life from the pit and you still trying to do things your way, even you said I'm in the army. I know it happens in the natural military all the time. They guys and girls both will sign up and they'll say, and then they'll get there and they'll be just as rebellious and, and it'll just stay in trouble or stay in lockdown in the military. Will not get to take advantage of all of the benefits because they want to do things their own way. But then after he says that, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. You can push him. You can push him. And he'll let you have it. Because those he loves don't chase him. That's scriptural. You know, just like how when your kids were little, especially, those of you who have children, and when your kids are, were little, you know, they, 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 they would push, you know, because kids will try you. And sometimes they'll see just how far you'll let them get away with it. And you'll be trying to talk all calmly to them and, and try to not go off on them, even though uh, the fire is raging inside of you. You're trying to keep it calm. Well, God is a better parent than we are. And look what it says. See, slow that. It says he will not always strive with us. That's what you think about your, kid, uh, your kids. I Look, I done told you 150 times to do this. Now, I'm talking to you now in a calm voice. Whew, but I'm not going to keep my anger forever. Do you think the Heavenly Father is any different? No, he is not. He will not keep his anger forever. Uh, but look at here. In verse 10, it says, he has not dealt with us according to our sins as we deserve, nor rewarded us with punishment according to our wickedness. I don't know what your life was before uh, you came to Christ, but I had no idea that when I signed up that he would toss every sin I had as far as the east is from the west, that he did with, he refused to remember all the, 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 the outrageous stuff that I did. He don't even bring it up to you. And I always often share with people that 
you know, when you be drinking and you be a loose woman and stuff like that, because they kind of go together, that, that of course I was also smoking cigarettes. I'm talking about the mercy of God. He let me smoke for almost a whole year. Because I guess he decided, oh, I'm not going to take everything from her right now. He let me smoke my Coos or Richland cigarettes. Those were the cheaper ones back then. He let me smoke them for almost a whole year. And then one day he said, he didn't say stop smoking. He said, don't buy any more cigarettes. Shucks, I was a two pack a day smoker. Huh. He knew exactly what to say. He knew exactly what to say because there was no way that I was going to bum two pack, 48 cigarettes, or what was it, 40, uh, 20 pack, 40 cigarettes a day. Wasn't no way in the world I could do it. That was exactly what he needed to say to be able to set me free. And it worked. Oh, because he's a good, good father. Such a good, good father. Wow. And then in the 11th verse, it says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. His loving kindness way up here. If we fear and worship him, hallelujah. You can't get better than that anywhere. And all this is a part of those Benefits we're not to forget. So no matter what is coming our way, we got to remember and take a stand in faith that we've got benefits that God has promised us. We don't have to flip out or do crazy stuff because our God is standing by waiting to bless us. But we have to, have to, have to be steadfast and unmovable and ever abounding in the work that he's called us to do. So great is his loving kindness toward those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. And here's what I was saying a few minutes ago in verse 12, as far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That stuff I used to do is on the East Coast and I live on the West Coast and he's there with me on the West Coast and he ain't even looking back or thought, a nary a thought about what I used to do. He's focused on what he wants me to do and that divine plan that he has for me. I was the one that brought it up all the time. I was the one that, well, that would, would feel guilty whenever that subject came up. But in due season, I understood that above everything else, I was forgiven and God wasn't thinking about the way I used to be. Because when he forgives, it's a done deal. Pulls us up out of the pit, hmm, out of the miry clay, and sets our feet on solid ground. Who else does that for you? You go find a job that does better than what God does in our lives. Ain't no such thing. And this is the part that really, really applies to the day. It says, just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. That's how he loves us. Just like some fathers love their children, he loves us and he will go literally to the end of the earth 
for us. And look at all of those benefits. And the only thing he requires of us, according to verse 13, the Lord loves those who do what? Fear and worship him with awe filled respect and deepest reverence. That's where we need to live this morning, in that place of awe. We could say, He's an awesome God. But while we don't always act like he is awesome, he deserves the glory. He deserves the respect. He deserves our deepest reverence. When we revere him, it's like, God, I know I'm smart, and I got a brain, and I think I should go this way. But we do like Jesus and said, nevertheless, God, not my will, but thy will be done. We catch ourselves. Now, we may go down that road a little ways, but we catch ourselves, pull ourselves back and say, not my will, God, but thy will be done. Father, he's a good, good father. Who wants his children to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he set you up and put you here to accomplish a mission and he's going to go out of his way, even do backward flips to make sure that you're able to do what you were created to do. And if ever there were a message for a Father's Day. We need to keep our eyes on him. I noticed that, that my niece Muisi, with regard to her little one, she tells him that he can't get out of his her sight. And even I can't convince him to do so because when we go up in the hills in the marsh, it looks like a, an adventure to him sometime. And, and he initially was running kind of away and, we're, we, and, and we'd freak a little bit when he was you know, out of our sight. So she has convinced him now that he cannot leave. He cannot go any further than she can see him. And then I think she says, if you, can't see me, then I can't see you. And so uh, she had stopped and, and was helping uh, our, 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 one of our team members, Pastor Campbell. Uh, she was help unloading the cart so he could take some stuff up that hill that he runs up is higher than any other place in the marsh. And, and I said, come on with you. Come on with me. Come on, come up. And he said, no, my mama said I can't get out of her sight. I say, well, go on with your bad self, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's what God is saying to all of us today. Don't be trying to step out of my sight. Don't be trying to step out of my will. I'm a good, good father. I've got this benefit package. And I want you to get every single benefit I have for you. And above everything else, I want you to fulfill your divine purpose. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and to give you peace in the final outcome. So I thank God this morning that he knows us and he loves us in spite of what he sees. Oh yeah, even in our weakest moments, in our weakest hour, he continues to love us unconditionally. If he could love us when we were toe up from the floor, then I know that he loves us even more now. And he's willing to do whatever is necessary to be able to make us all that we need to be so that we can stand tall in the land as representatives of him. And on those occasions where he has to chasten us, you need to know that he's doing that with love. 
Love is who he is. God is love. He is love. So we don't have to worry about it. No matter what our earthly father might have taught us, no matter what our earthly father, if there, if there were hurts or, or things where he fell short, we have to learn how to forgive that and turn our undivided attention unto a God who wants our absolute best, to a God who is faithful beyond measure, who will never leave us nor forsake us. And we have to stop believing that humans will never leave us or forsake us because it just ain't so. God, our good father, will never leave us nor forsake us. Great is his faithfulness. And we have to stand on that and remember that serving him comes with the greatest benefit package you'll ever get anywhere, anytime, and any place. Thank you. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, Father, I pray you said your word would not return unto you void, but would prosper in the place that you sent it to Jesus. So Father, let it prosper right now. Let it get into the very soil of our hearts, Father. Let it go to those places where it needs to go, God, and do the thing that you desire your word to do. Break up the fallow ground, the hard places in us, God, so that we will come to Jesus with all that is within us. And we'll do like David. We'll bless your name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. So as we go throughout this day, let us find ourselves, like the song says, in the place where all we want to do is bless his name be a blessing to him with all that he does if there is any among us that has not given your heart to the lord if you don't know for certain that you're in the army of the lord if you don't if you're not certain that you got the benefit package you know how some people can go to a job and uh, i think it's common now where they you're a temporary employee and you don't know corporations now will, will sign you up and sign you in, but they won't give you the benefits that the full-time permanent employees get. Well, I want you to know that God don't roll like that, but there's something that you have to do. And I'm going to pray a prayer. And if, if I'm talking to you, I'm going to ask that you repeat this prayer after me so that you can too know for certain that you are a permanent soldier in the army of the Lord, entitled to every benefit we've talked about in Psalms 103. Dear Lord, I ask that you would forgive me for my sins, I believe you died and rose just for me. Come and live inside my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen. Amen. If, if you prayed that prayer, 
I, 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 I need to talk to you and I need to, to give you uh, some uh, literature. I have something here that God gave me to write and I want you to have that uh, today. I can send it to you uh, via, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, email or whatever. But uh, uh, God is good and uh, he's merciful. And if you did indeed say that prayer, you can believe that heaven is rejoicing because another one has come in. Just like I came in many years ago, I know somebody up in heaven was tanned a place up mm -hmm. uh, because I finally got it right and decided to come in. And so we just thank God for you. We thank God for all of you that came on this uh, beloved Father's Day. Um, I, I just, I've been thinking about my dad and uh, a lot and uh, believe it or not, I was the kid, as crazy as I was as a kid, I was the one, and I didn't think about it until 40 years later, I was the one, he was a pastor, I was the one that he took to all of his uh, pastoral errands. When he went to give people communion, he took me. When he went to um, uh, pray for the sick and the shut-in, he took me. <laughs> and so little did I know that he and God was working something out so that many years ago, even after all that junk and mess I did, when I came to myself and I... And I made the decision that I'm going to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. All that stuff started to come back to me. And now I'm the one that's out there blessing people with communion and praying for the sick and the shut-in and anybody else that comes my way. So you see, God has a plan for your life. You can believe, believe, believe that uh, he will execute that plan for you. Just grab his hand and let him do that. Amen. 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 Anybody else got uh, something to say for the Lord before we leave this place? Uh, in the way of announcements, um, just play them. Uh, 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 Lisa, would you just play the announcements and then we'll let you get out of here. I know y'all got to go eat and do all kind of fun stuff uh, to celebrate dads and men and all that stuff. So I want you to go out and have uh, your food and all that stuff and uh, uh, think about me, my no cooking self <laughs> and something uh, somewhere because I showed on all nothing that's in this house. All right. Um, so you're going to uh, play the announcements, Miss yes. Lisa? Okay, and just, just take heed to all of this and then I'll dismiss us. Hold that thought, Lisa. If this is your first... I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll do it after this. Go ahead. I'm visiting us at Fountain of Life. Would you please wave your hand? We are so glad you chose to worship with us today. Please let us know if we could be a blessing to you in any way and be sure to leave us your contact information in the chat box at the bottom of the screen so we can stay in touch. You may also stay for a few minutes after service to speak with Pastor McNair. Any birthday or anniversary folk? Blessed and favored birthday anniversary to you. We love you. Please note that we will continue to meet on Sundays on Zoom at 1039 a.m. for as long as the Lord directs. Bible study is on Tuesdays at 7 p.m and our Roadside Prayer Street Ministry meets from 12 to 3 in Menlo Park on Thursdays. 2020 Census makes sense. It is all about our getting the resources we need in times like these. Make sure you send yours in or complete it online at census2020.gov. Do it today, okay? As Fountain of Life evolves to meet the needs of these changing times, we are looking for folk who will serve as singers and musicians and also children's Bible study and activity leaders. Please let us know quickly if music or working with children is in your wheelhouse. Call Pastor Tara McNair at 510-302-7303. We appreciate your giving 
and hope you will continue to do so as the Lord leads you. If you wish to tithe or give an offering today, then download the Givelify app and make your donation to Fountain of Life Global Christian Ministries in Menlo Park. You may also mail your tithe or offering check payable to Fountain of Life GCM to Pastor T. McNair, 1221 Willow Road, number 130, Menlo Park, California, 94025. And Givelify is G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. So were there any birthdays in the house, birthdays or anniversaries? Uh, let me unmute. Uh, is there, oh, everybody's on. Wait, there's somebody there. That's un, let me unmute. Any birthdays in the house or uh, anniversaries? To ignore that. Okay. Uh, this is the week. Uh, thank you. I guess not. I guess there are. What, what month is this? June? Okay. June. I guess we'll catch you the next month or so. <laughs> um, thank God for you anyhow. It's not your fault you weren't born during the month of June. I guess we ain't got nobody here that was born in June. All right. We got birthdays coming up though. Um, I just wanted to say that this is the week that uh, no Bible study this Tuesday. Uh, 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 and um, I think that was the only announcement, no Bible study. And um, uh, take heed to all of that other stuff. If you've got a voice and, and uh, God has called you to sing, you better say something. Mm -hmm. We have to call you out, <laughs> right? Because it really sounds good when we get a live voice singing up in here or an instrument. If you're a guitar player or a flute player or a, a piccolo flavor or a player or something like that. Let us know. Let the, let the Lord be uh, 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 blessed. Uh, bless him with your uh, gift, whatever that is. So just give me a holler and uh, I'll put you to work real quick because we need laborers in this army of the Lord. I thank God for each of you and for your coming this morning. And I'm just excited about where God is going to take us uh, in this season. And uh, you just be encouraged in everything that you do and say and, and continue to encourage those that you come in contact with. Uh, we're going to keep doing what uh, God has called us to do. And we're not going to let anything stop us. Uh, and uh, just, you know, it's, it's that military attitude. I'm gonna fight, you know, no matter what, I have to fight. I have to fight. And a lot of times, guess what? Right. The battle's in the mind, all right? So do what you're supposed to do as you go forth and uh, don't eat too much. And uh, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you on uh, next Sunday. Uh, we're approaching the end of uh, this month, and we want to continue to have a good time in the Lord and fellowship with, with one another. Um, uh, if you come early enough, you can hear uh, what goes on uh, uh, before uh, we get into service. Uh, uh, sometimes that's how we check in with one another and, and find out uh, some of the exciting things that are happening in each other's lives. Um, so uh, just go, go where you go and be blessed and uh, uh, just wherever you go, take the Lord with you. They used to say, take the name of Jesus with you wherever you go this week and live for him in an even greater way than, than ever before. I love you. And uh, if you need anything for, from me, 510-302-7303 uh, is my number always available leave a message and a number at a time when I can uh, reach back to you if I don't pick up the phone. God bless you. God keep you. And uh, God let his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day, dads. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Yes. Who is that? Uh, is that Mike? That's me. <laughs> All right. Happy Daddy Day. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. All right. So y'all be good. Be good out there. And um, oh, um, uh, McGoldrick's, I'm with 
We won't be out uh, these next two Thursdays uh, in Roadside. This is a, um, our, our, our break. We take two weeks at, in June. Okay. So we won't be out there, but you call me because I'm gonna reach out uh, to those people that I said I would, all right? So let's stay in touch by phone. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for the heads up. All Thank right. You. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Who's that? At, let's see. Who's the five person? Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's me.